Good morning YouTube. After several years of researching a replacement for my Synology NAS, this is what I've come up with. So this is the NAS that I decided to purchase. So this is a model DS1618+. Plus. The 16 means that it's capable of up to 16 drives. So the main unit has six drive bays. And then on the back side here, there are two additional expansion ports. So you can connect up to five expansion bays to each one. And then the 18 signifies this was a 2018 model. And then the plus is that this has the upgraded CPU and memory. Yeah, so this is pretty similar to my previous NAS. My old NAS was the 1513 plus, so it had five internal bays and it was the 2013 model. My old NAS had a D2700. This one has a C3538. Both models are approximately 2.1 gigahertz processor speed. The Older NAS had two cores. This model has four cores. The D2700, for example, had a half megabyte of internal cache and one megabyte external. This one has two megs internal or L2 core and eight megabytes of L2 cache. And speaking of memory, this one comes with four gigabytes installed and there's two SIM slots or SO DIM slots. So you can go 4 gigs, you can go 8 gigs, and then there's also a 16 gig SIM that's ECC memory. So you can put in 16 or 32 gigs of ECC memory. My old NAS had 2 gigs on the system board and you could add a 2 gig SIM and that was it. So memory was one of the bottlenecks my old NAS ran into because I was running the SSD cache feature and that was using up about two gigs of RAM and then some of the applications I was running on the NAS wanted like two gigs of memory and then the, the NAS itself, the operating system, the DSM, Disk Station Manager, wants memory and the new BTRFS file system wants a bunch of memory, several gigabytes. And with four gigs, you just can't do that. And it also has the uh, hardware encryption support built in, as well as virtualization support. My old NAS doesn't support virtualization. Th this one does, so I can do things like run the virtual machine manager I think this one will just give me a lot more headroom. The other thing this has is that there's a PCI Express slot in here that you can install either one or two SSDs on the expansion card for your SSD cache, or you can install a 10 gigabit Ethernet card. So this comes with four gigabit Ethernet ports and then you can add one additional 10 gigabit Ethernet port. So this one has some expansion capability that my old NAS didn't have. One thing I like about Synology is that they kind of expect you to have to open the case up to change memory you know, add circuit boards and whatnot. So they don't put one of those silly warranty void if removed labels on there. They make it accessible. Let's take a look inside of here. So yeah, I guess this side, this is where your PCI Express card goes. So that's on the left side of the unit. I think this is an X8 connector there. We'll be looking at that in a bit. You've got your six drive bays here, and then you've got your two fans. Let's see, so this is the other end. Here's your power supply and the system board. On my old NAS, I think the memory sim was over on this side. Ah, okay, there's a panel on the bottom. I bet that's where the memory goes. Yeah, let's take a look at the power supply here. So yeah, it's a Delta electronics. Yeah, there we go. 
It says wait 10 minutes after powering off. I guess that's probably to let the voltage die down. So the one advantage this unit has over my previous NAS, it has two actual sockets that you can plug memory into. My old NAS, the first SIM was soldered onto the motherboard and you only had one physical socket. So you had two gigs here and you could put two gigs there and that was it. Of course the Atom D2700 processor could only handle four gigs of memory. Okay, let's start out here and we'll get this memory installed. So there are several options on memory. You have the four gig SIM that comes in here and you can install a second four gig SIM and then it seems like the other option is you can go to one of these 16 gig error correcting memory modules which can give you 16 or 32 gigs. These are official Synology parts. You can see Synology memory module for Synology NAS servers. The two memory modules cost about the same as the NAS. I think it's Kingston has a compatible memory that's about $200 a piece. So you're looking at $400 instead of about $700 for the, the memory. But Synology has a big warning on their page that if you put non-Synology memory into your NAS, you may void your five-year warranty. You know, if you report some problem and they need to log in, they can apparently check what type of memory you have installed and if it's not Synology memory and they decide the memory was the cause of the problem, they can refuse to uh, support you. Now I think in my old NAS, I added a non-Synology memory module. I had one time where I contacted support and they logged in and checked some things and I forget what all happened, but they never mentioned anything about the memory. They only mention it, at least on, on this particular model, or the models that use this ECC memory. So I'm not sure if that's just a scare tactic, or if it's a real concern. But because of that, I went with the official Synology memory. I guess the other option you could do is run the non-Synology memory and then if you run into a problem you could always put like the 4 gig memory module and have the official Synology memory in when you call support so that if they log in they could check that. I don't know if that would be a, a workaround or not but I decided to go with the official Synology memory. I had a kind of a hard time getting this. I went through a few vendors and many of them were out of stock and they couldn't tell you when they were going to get the, the parts in. So I, I ended up, I think I got this from DH Photo. They had it in stock and shipped it right away. There we go. Yeah, that's the official Synology packaging and that's the, the 16 gig. Put their sticker. Oh, so you even have to keep the sticker on the module. So let me get this one out of the box and we'll see about putting those two in there. Okay, there we got our two memory modules. So these are the laptop SO DIMM modules. So that's why these are a little bit unique or hard to find because they're not the full size PC memory modules. These are like you put in your laptop. Warranty void, there's your serial number and all that. We've got one there, and then we've got one over here. And there we go, we got our memory upgraded, so that's maxed out. So this Intel Atom C3538 processor will handle dual channel memory. So if you have two SIMs that are the same speed, the same size, you get double the memory bandwidth. My old NAS had the 1066 megahertz memory. This is 1800 megahertz, but then you can also do the dual channel, which I guess doubles that up to 3600. So I think it definitely pays to 
put in two SIMs, no matter which size memory you're using. What I find on these units is, over time, you will put more and more things, more applications, more tasks, more stuff running on here, and everything you put on here takes memory, and you only have a finite amount there, so you might as well just max it out to begin with. So I figure I will load this up with memory, and now I'm done with that. And I think 32 gigs should be pretty good for what I need, because the BTRFS file system needs something like 3 to 4 gigs. The SSD cache that's going to be in here needs about 2 to 4 gigs of memory. I'm running the Magento e-commerce software, which runs on top of PHP, and that wants to have 2 gigs of memory. So right there, I'm 8 to 10 gigs just used up already out of those 32. I'm already 30% full. As if I do the virtual machine manager and set up a virtual machine on this. So if I set up, say, a one-core processor and 8 gigs of RAM to make a virtual machine out of, well, there goes another 8. So now I'm... I'm up to about 18 gigs, so I've already used half of that memory is already gone. So I figure 16 probably wouldn't have been enough, so might as well go to 32 and just call it done. So yeah, in the next video we'll come over here and uh, get the PCI Express card, plug the two SSDs in there, and get this side buttoned up. So stay tuned for that. I'll put that video over here on the left side. If you have any questions about that, post up in the comment section down below. And as always, thanks for watching.